All right, folks, I wanted to hop online and give you an update on how the new MacBook Pros with M2 have turned out. Specifically, the 14 inch, as that's the form factor I've been using the most. If you've watched my full review, you'll know that I couldn't decide which one to get. That's the processor that is. Should I get the 10 core CPU or the 12? So I ordered both. And in this video, not only am I gonna give you my long-term review of the 14-inch MacBook Pro, but I'm also gonna reveal which processor I kept and why. Please note, today's video won't have any benchmark results. It is purely based on my real-world personal use of these laptops over the last couple of months. I flew to Columbia with the MacBook Pro, the 10-core model. And then I flew to Australia with the 12-core one. In each case, I used them extensively. I did video editing on the go, worked remotely using plenty of Office applications, played a lot of teamfight tactics on them, a little bit too much, and of course, basic web browsing. And I got to thoroughly test their battery life as I used them while I traveled, whether it was in coffee stores or on planes. If you do want quantitative test results of these laptops, please watch my original MacBook Pro M2 video. I'll link it down below. And this one builds on that video, and that one was jam-packed with benchmarks and tests. Where I left you off after watching that video was that the MacBook Pro 14 with M2 is a nice upgrade from the older M1 version. Everyday applications are snappier, battery life is longer, and you've got some creature comforts, including an improved webcam, HDMI 2.1, and Wi-Fi 6E. When it comes to processor selection between the 10-core or 12-core model, in that video I showed that the 10-core variant was pretty much better for most people. It got the benefits of increased single-core performance of M2 over M1 that is, and the 10-core variant was more efficient. It performed better per watt, which translated into far less fan noise and longer battery life for performance tasks. For light use, both units had similar battery life and were dead silent. The only benefit of the 12-core over the 10-core was of course increased multi-core performance. However, while making that video, I discovered that my high-performance apps don't even utilize all the cores of even the 10-core model, and therefore they don't run any faster on the 12-core one. Funnily enough, one of the apps, Premiere Pro, does see a benefit from the increased memory bandwidth of the M2 Max chip, but I don't recommend upgrading all the way to that processor, in this small 14-inch chassis that is. It gets too hot and can't be effectively utilized. That processor should really be saved for the larger 16-inch MacBook Pro, which has a more robust cooling solution. So here's what happened. The more time that I spent using the 10-core variant, I definitely noticed that it felt warmer to the touch than the 12-core variant and my older 8-core M1 unit. I'd guess somewhere in the range 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. That's for any kind of performance tasks, by the way. I retested the laptops side by side using my heat gun many times and this didn't show up in my temperature readings. But it was definitely there, it felt warmer to the touch. By the way, I think the reason it didn't show up in my temperature readings is due to the way I measured temperatures. I measured the max temperature across the entire keyboard deck and palm rest. So if a particular area where my hand is placed is hotter, it won't show up in that test. That meant for the 10-core model, I once again found myself needing to use the Max Fan Control app, which allowed me to raise the fan speeds of the 10-core model to keep it feeling cool to the touch. This is something I haven't had to do on a Mac laptop since they had Intel processors. I found on the 10-core model, I needed to raise the fan speed quite a bit to keep the laptop feeling cool to the touch. This got me thinking. Based on my prior testing, I knew that the 12-core variant ran the fans a lot faster when the laptop's processor was maxed out. So my first inclination was that perhaps for any performance tasks at all, even short bursty ones like a code compile, maybe the 12-core variant ran the fans at a faster speed. Perhaps that is what was causing the laptop to feel cooler to the touch. So I tried running some performance tasks while tracking the fan speeds. It wasn't that. The fans of both laptops were running at around the same speed for the same tasks. Just to clarify, in this test I was running real world performance applications like a video render that did not fully max out the CPU. That's why my results here were different to my earlier findings in my prior video, that the 12 core variant ran the fans faster and had significantly louder fan noise. And if you're wondering, in these real world tests, both laptops fans were inaudible at the RPM that they were running at, which was normally at a little over 2000. So why does the 12 core model run cooler to the touch? I honestly don't know. Perhaps the 12-core model is a better bin chip. 
Binning is the process of testing a chip after it's been manufactured. The ones that perform better, i.e. they can reach higher gigahertz and of course are more efficient, they become the higher end chips, i.e. the 12 core model. The worse performing ones have two cores disabled and become the 10 core chips. Another thought is that because the 12 core has more cores, it is able to better spread out the processing load of some of the background threads running on your laptop than the 10 core. And my last thought is that perhaps it's just something random. Maybe the thermal paste on my 12 core model was applied more evenly than on my 10 core. All right, so let's switch to some of the other aspects of the laptop. In real world use, I did notice the extra battery life of the M2 version of the MacBook Pro 14 over the older M1. I guess I was receiving somewhere in the region of 30 minutes to an extra hour of battery life. Next, there are two things that I did notice that I don't like about the MacBook Pro 14 that I want to talk about. The lower edge of the spacebar on some units of the 14 inch can feel a little sharp when you glide your finger over it. And while typing, if you hold your wrist at a certain angle, you may find your thumb gets caught on the side of the spacebar. It's like it sticks out a tiny bit. Please note, I did find this on the older M1 version too. I ended up swapping my M1 unit to another one where this didn't happen. It wasn't to do with the processor choice at all. Some of the spacebars, they just feel stiffer than others. It happened on my M2 12 core version, but it wasn't noticeable on the M2 10 core. Since I kept the 12 core version, this is something that I've just got used to living with. If this is something that annoys you, I wouldn't hesitate to return yours and buy another where it's hopefully less of an issue. Finally, the biggest thing I don't like about the 14 inch MacBook Pro, other than the price, is if you're using the laptop where you don't have support for your wrists, i.e. you're lying down on the couch or on a plane using a tray table, the sharp edge of the laptop cuts into your wrists. When I was on the long plane ride back from Australia to America, this was brutal. I had to fold a blanket and put it over the edge of the laptop. So that's my long-term thoughts and use of the MacBook Pro 14 with M2. Overall, like the M1, it continues to be an absolutely excellent all-round laptop for someone who does performance tasks on the go or just wants a big screen, high quality portable laptop. I'm lucky in that I have the choice of any laptop I want to use, and I've chosen to use this one as my primary laptop, so you can imagine how good it is. The differences I notice on this laptop versus the older M1 is that loading applications and switching between them feels faster. You get a smidge more battery life, and the webcam is a bit better. When it comes to which MacBook Pro 14 you should get, if you at all care about the cost and you can find the older M1 version for $400 cheaper, get that. The benefits of the M2 version are too minor to not save that money. If you're going to get an M2 model and are only doing light tasks, office work, responding to emails and browsing the web, I'd get the 10 core model. You really won't notice any difference at all when upgrading to the 12 core model. If you are doing performance oriented tasks on the laptop, it's a toss up. If your applications will really use all the cores available or you're super nitpicky like I am, get the 12 core variant, that's what I did. Otherwise, I'd save the money and get the 10 core variant. It will be more than good enough and the extra dollars you'll save can be put towards upgrading in a future year where the benefits of the money spent will be more significant. Well, I hope you like this video and it helps you out. If it did, make sure to smash that like button and ensure you have the notification bell on so you can be notified the moment I post future videos. If you do need further help, check out our Discord server where vetted laptop specialists are standing by to help you out. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.